and we are up here at Mount Hutt. We've been on the snow today, I promise. It might not look like it from the hill behind me that is all green, but up at the top of there, there is some snow, even if it is a little bit bare at the moment. Uh, we've actually just driven down to the base car park uh, where we've parked up for the night uh, because Mount Hutt allows overnight camping. And I thought this would be the perfect time to talk to you guys about freedom camping in New Zealand, how it's helped our trip, and how you can do it if you want to plan your own trip. First of all, what I have to say is, I don't think this trip would be possible without the ability to freedom camp in New Zealand. For those of you that follow us via our social channels and our blog, this trip is seven weeks. Now, seven weeks in New Zealand, it's not the cheapest place to visit. Freedom camping gives you a real chance to explore, have that freedom to spend a night somewhere like this, or I will be honest, there are better locations where you can freedom camp, maybe with a, a river or something more scenic, but not to have to spend out every single night on a campsite. How do you do it though? The easiest way is to use an app. The one that I've been using, available on iPhone and on Android, is called CamperMate. I'll stick a link down in the description. Um, but on CamperMate, it actually details the different locations where you can camp. It's really, really handy. Along the map, you can actually select a campsite, choose your directions, and it will take you right there. You can search by... Um, different points of interest, for example, Mount Hutt, and you can see what's available nearby. Campermate, or whichever app you're choosing to use, will then give you a, a list of campsites, whether they are paid campsites, low-cost campsites, or free campsites. Campermate lists all of its free campsites as green circles on the map, and that's what we've been using for the majority of our trip here in New Zealand. Being able to use free campsites wherever we go in New Zealand has saved so much money. In Queenstown, the average cost of a campsite is $50 to $60 per night. There's a couple of freedom camping sites on the outskirts of Queenstown where you're able to stay for between four and eight nights per month. And if you can use those campsites, it just means you're saving that extra income. In reality, you're not gonna be able to use freedom camping sites, especially on a trip like this, a seven week trip, every single night. You need to go to a paid campsite every now and again so that you can top up on things like water, get rid of any waste or trash that you've accumulated along the road. And you do need to do that. We're finding every third or fourth night. But what that means is that out of five nights, we're looking at staying in a paid campsite once which means that rather than spending $50 times five nights, 250 bucks, we're actually spending 50 New Zealand dollars and that's nearly getting us through a week. So the second thing that you wanna be aware of if you're gonna be freedom camping, especially in winter, is that it can be cold and you're not gonna have access to heating. Our van's pretty cool in that for every hour that you drive, you get eight hours of electricity the drive up and down the mountain, whether here at Mount Hutt or the other drives that we've done at the Remarkables or Coronet Peak, tend to be nearly an hour in each direction. So that means you're getting 16 hours of electricity a day. You can spend that in your van on charging your phone or your GoPros via USB. You can power the lights in the van. You can keep the fridge nice and cool. But what you're not gonna have is a heater. For a heater, you're gonna to have to stay in a paid campsite. And with that in mind, if you are planning to freedom camp in the winter, just make sure that you are bringing the right clothes and some thermals to keep you warm at night. If you are gonna be spending the big bucks and going for that night in a luxury campsite so you can have heating, I've got another tip for you. Go to the supermarket, buy all of your food. Most of the campsites have got these big kitchen so much easier than cooking in your van prepare all of your meals for the next couple of weeks every time we stay in a campsite we go in the kitchen cook up a load of good grub and then it's easy when you're in the van all you have to do at night is reheat it there's no cutting because in the vans they're pretty small you've got all your ski gear anyway 
and you don't really have room to be messing about. So if you're going to freedom camp, use paid campsites wisely and prepare all your food for the road. Next thing that I want to talk to you about is just camping responsibly. A freedom campsite should be just that, left exactly how you find it. Some of them are run by local authorities, some of them by the DOC, some of them just kind farmers who are letting you onto their land. It's really important that you stick to the freedom campsites and that you don't just pull up on the side of the road somewhere. It's likely that you're probably going to get moved on in the middle of the night, or even worse, you could get a fine for parking in the wrong place. It's really important with all of these campsites as well to make sure that you don't litter. There's been a number of campsites, especially uh, most notably around Queenstown, that have been shut down because of irresponsible campers. If you're going to freedom camp, you should always practice leave no trace. Finally, I just want to say I have really enjoyed the experience of freedom camping around the South Island. I would recommend it for anybody. It's a really great, affordable way to see this beautiful country. If you've got any questions about freedom camping, what you can, what you can't do, how to go about it, maybe even uh, the van that we rented and what it was like staying in it, just drop it down below in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you again next week with another video. See you later.